All right, guys, been going through the mailbag and uh, got this assortment of odds and ends. This is from Paul J. in Sterling, Virginia. Um, it's actually kind of a, an eclectic assortment of stuff. We have an American lock here, and then there's some Japanese stuff of two different types of locks located. We'll talk about those in a minute. Let's just start with this guy. This looks a lot like a Euro lock. Um, but it is not. This is a copy. The shape is wrong. The assembly is wrong. This is actually permanently put together. It's almost like a disposable lock because um, you'll notice there are no circlips in the between there. You can't take it apart. Assembled at the factory. Uh, sometimes there, it's keyed on both sides. Other times, like this one, you've got a uh, thumb turn for the inside, obviously. Gosh, wouldn't it be easy if that was on the outside? Anyway, um, five pins. Here's what it looks like. The name of the company is called Wright, and there is the pinning. So this is actually not a bad pinning. Works very smooth. And the way they do this, they insert the core, they fit it to the actuator of choice, and then from the top, they drop the pins in. And then, of course, before they seal it, they make sure the key turns, and of course this one does, and then they drive this little brass rod right there, all the way through to retain all the pins and springs in the upper chamber. So pretty cool, but it's cool. Not so cool because you really can't do anything with it. It's not. You can't take it apart without destroying the lock. Um, these are usually replaced very quickly by new owners. These are almost like master locks of sliding glass doors. That looks like about a. I mean, it's a medium. We'll try that. The only thing is they have very small keyways, so you got to be careful with the the pick that you choose. It can't have too much of a rise or you're going to be oversetting stuff. I'm going to use this little hybrid. I like to bully these. Let me zoom in a little here because they are very easy. You apply heavy tension and don't worry about your binding order. Just find that pin. When it's binding, just mash it up until it clicks. Just force it. There you go. There you go. Oh, I got a false set. That is unusual. You usually have no security pins. Okay, got a fault set. That means it's got probably a spool in there somewhere. There it is, pin 5, counter rotation, and there you go. That's a first. I have never seen security pins in these before. Anyway, there you go, the right sliding glass door lock. Replace it if you have one on your door. That's my advice. All right, this next stuff is, is pretty interesting. This has come a long ways for us. This is a Japanese pachinko lock. Look, you guys probably don't know what pachinkos are, but they're very popular with collectors. And this is the master key. You can buy these on the internet. Um, they're not that expensive because really only collectors have these machines. They're actually a like a slot machine. But in, in Japan, you put your money in, you place your bet, and then you launch a bunch of balls. They pachinko around and eventually enter into a slot in the bottom and you either lose all your money which is usually what happens or you actually win something this is to open up the machine uh to get everything to do act, uh, maintenance and to take out all the cash now that the machines are obsolete you can get these on the internet pretty inexpensively this is also from a pachinko machine and it's a little bit older uh, but this is not the key because this is for a warded lock and this is actually a magnetic lock which is very cool when you look down in there you see nothing there's no pins or anything but on the right side there i think you can see ref the light reflecting off of the bank of magnets on the right and if you look on the bottom there's also a bank of magnets uh, on the left side so it's oriented like this this is mounted on the back of the door slides through the door and this part protrudes from the front uh, they discovered a vulnerability of these, and I'll try it right now, see if we can do it. Um, let me turn my light off so I don't waste the battery. And I'll show you what this is. These also are obsolete. These are very popular uh, with collectors. The thing is, uh, the keys are like rare as hen's teeth, the magnetic key. I don't think I've ever even seen one um, because they just didn't escape from custody, I guess. All right. Um... I am going to use a tensioner. We are going to need it. And I'm going to probably take this guy. I want to make sure the actuator in the back is free. And it is. Now what I'm going to do, if I can find a magnet over here. Take this little magnet. Whoa. Very strong. And what I'm going to do is just put them around the edge and just keep trying it. As I move this thing around the edge. Come on. 
try to keep my hand out of the frame. And eventually, if it isn't this end, we can use the other and just flip the magnet over. Oh, as I said, it's a very strong magnet. A little hard to keep control here. And eventually you'll find a place where you can influence. That's actually a false set right there. Let's see if I can convince him to go. Nope. Come on, baby. I think controlling the magnet's harder than controlling the lock. And the tensioner. There we go. Got it. So there's an open on the Pachinko magnetic lock. That, that's a technique you can use on a lot of the simpler magnetic locks. Again, these are from the 1950s and 1960s, so it's a pretty simple mechanism. You can be sure today magnetic locks are a little bit more complex than so it, to be defeated by a magnet. Of course, these magnets weren't available back then, but uh, that's beside the point. Anyway, guys, there you go. A whole pile of stuff from Paul J. in Sterling, Virginia. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Hey, guys, stay safe. Stay legal.